Today on The Joy of Editing, let's get creative. I'll use Topaz Studio 2 along with Topaz Photo AI. We'll make a fall abstract image. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Let's have some fun today. We're going to turn this stock image into an abstract fall image. Now you can download this image and give this edit a try. I'll be using Photo AI to balance out the lighting as well as the color, and then we'll send it into Topaz Studio 2 and see how creative we can get turning this into an abstract image. Before we even know it, fall will be upon us, so let's think ahead. By the way, there's a new update for Topaz Photo AI. I made a video about the new update. It's really cool, so I'll link that at the end of this video. If you don't own Topaz Photo AI yet or Gigapixel AI, I have affiliate links in the description below this video. You can click on those links and purchase those products. When you use my affiliate link, I make a small commission, and this helps me to keep tutorials coming your way. So thank you all for using my links. I really appreciate it. Now, you can no longer purchase Topaz Studio 2, but I know a lot of you out there do have it. It's a great program. And if you're listening, Topaz, we need this program back. And let me know in the comments section below if you feel the same way about it as I do. If you're using a Mac machine with a later processor, like an M1 processor, you can still use Topaz Studio 2. It works perfectly as a standalone app, but if you want to use it from Photoshop, you just have to run uh, Photoshop in the Rosetta mode, and it will work. If you have a Mac with an Intel processor, no problem whatsoever. Don't forget, you can download this image. I do have a link in the description below. Now, I'm starting out with this image. What I did in this image, I just typed C to get my crop tool in the crop menu. Notice I'm set up for width times height and resolution. There's a drop down here. You have different choices here for aspect ratios. And you'll notice I don't have any numbers in these two fields, so I can do a freeform crop. So I basically just gave it a crop something like, like that. But I've already cropped this image. But after you get your crop, click on the check or you can type your return key. But I'm just going to click on this image and it's already cropped. And you'll notice I duplicated my background layer. I'm going to send this into Topaz Photo AI and we'll see if it can balance out the color and lighting on this image because I really don't like the color or the lighting. And we'll see if that can help us. And we'll just come up to the Photoshop menu, click on Filter, come down and find Topaz Labs, click on Topaz Photo AI. We'll launch it and let's see what we can do. And here we are inside of Photo AI. I'm going to come down here, see where it says 100%, click this drop down and click Fit. And now we can see the entire image, which will help us to evaluate what Photo AI is going to do. I'm going to come up here to Add Enhancements, click the plus. And the first thing I want to do is balance out the color. So let's click Balance Color and give it a second or two to run. And look at that, man. <laughs> that looks so much better. It's done a really good job. I'm impressed. Now we have two sliders here. We have an opacity slider. We could pull this to the left and let some of the original color show through, but I like it. And if you want to warm it up, you can drag the temperature slider to the right or to the left to cool it off a little bit. But I think it looks really good. I'm going to leave it here. Now let me go ahead and click on Add Enhancements. And this time, let's click Adjust Lighting. And that looks much better. I'm going to go ahead and drag the strength up a little bit more and see if I can get a little bit better job. Yeah, I think I like that. Now let me shut off adjust lighting to see the before the adjust lighting. There's the before adjust lighting. And now I'll click this eye back on and here is after. Yeah, I really like this. A nice improvement. Now if I hold my space bar down, you can see we started here and now we end up here. Now that looks better. And now all we need to do is click on export to Adobe Photoshop and that'll bring us back into Photoshop and here we are. And I'll shut this Topaz Photo AI layer off. Here's before and here's after. Wow, that does a really good job. Hey, and if you have images that, are, that your color's off and your lighting's off a little bit, try Balance Color and Adjust Lighting. It's a quick and easy solution. Now, before I take this into Studio 2, you see this light area right here. This is bugging me a little bit, but let's try the Remove tool, the new Remove tool in Photoshop. I'll click this button, and what I'll do is circle around this area like so and see what it can do. And look at that. That looks so much better. I'm just going to go around here one time just to see if I can blend that better. That looks really good. Maybe over here one more time. 
And now let's see if I get rid of this pumpkin right here. I'm just going to circle around this area right here and this little vine hanging down. And yeah, that looks good. Here's some artifacts here. I'm just going to circle around here. In fact, I'm going to get this one down here too. And I'll remove this little weird area right here. And that looks so much better. Isn't that cool? I love that remove tool. And you know what? This little white gourd or whatever it is, I'm just going to circle around it. And let's get rid of that. And now I am happy and we can send this in Photoshop. But wait, we have this little straw right down here. Let's get rid of that. And let's get rid of this guy. Don't you love that remove tool? It's really great. I'll go ahead and duplicate this Topaz Photo AI layer by doing a Command J to duplicate it. And I'm just going to double click here and call this TS2 for Topaz Studio 2. And now we can come up here to the Photoshop menu, click on Filter, come down to Topaz Studio 2, click on that, we'll launch it, and let's see how creative we can get. I love the looks inside of Topaz Studio 2. They really help you to kind of find your footing here to see which direction you want to take your artistic impression of your image. So let's click on Add Look. And I'm going to go to abstract because I want to do an abstract image today. And the first one here, abstract flux, I'm going to click on that and see what it looks like. It looks like that. Now, I know that looks really crazy. But when I was coming up with this tutorial today, the first one I clicked on was abstract flux. And, you know, I tried a couple of these other ones here like abstraction too. Now, that looks way overboard, I think. Now, just because something looks a little bit weird to you, that doesn't mean you can't go in there and alter all the different filters that it's using. And I'll show you what I mean. I like abstract flux. So I'll click on that again. And now I'll click apply. Now, you can also pull back on the amount here and let some of the original image show through if you want to. And something like that looks looks kind of nice. Well, it's not abstract enough for me, but I'll leave it up the whole way up to 100% and click apply. Now you'll notice I have a group called abstract flux and inside we have three filters. We have glow, abstraction and smudge. I'm going to click on glow and you'll see all of the different adjustments and there is a lot of them and I like the way it is, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to do some experimenting. I'm going to take this primary glow strength slider and let's drag it to the left and see how it's changing. And I'm gonna take it over to right there, 0.22. And now for primary effect sharpness, I'm gonna pull this back and you'll see how it becomes less sharp. You see that? I want it pretty sharp, so I'm gonna take it up to right there, 0.95. And then I'm gonna slide down through here and take this sharpness slider. I'll drag it to the right and you'll notice how the image sharpens up, right? Now you can make it look really crazy. I just wanna sharpen it up a little bit to right there, 0.13. Okay, I'm liking the way it's going and I'm not happy yet. We're going to keep going. Now I did play around and experiment with a lot of the different sliders here, but you know what? These are the ones that I thought made the most sense for my abstract look. And now let's click on abstraction. And now we can see the sliders for the abstraction filter. Now, by the way, I did make some PDF notes of all the settings that I've made. And every time you see a little red dash, that means that's an adjustment that I've made. So if you'd like the same results I got, just follow the notes here and then of course experiment on your own but I will link the PDF notes as well as the image in the description below this video for this abstraction filter I didn't make any changes let me go ahead and click the eye and shut it off this is what it looks like without the abstraction filter it looks like that and it looks like this with the abstraction filter so it makes a big difference but I liked it the way it was so I didn't touch it I'll open this abstraction filter back up by clicking on it. Now remember, these are the adjustments from the abstract flux look. Now I'll click on smudge and we'll see how the smudge sliders are set up. The best way to learn what these sliders do are just to play with them, okay? So let me take the strength and I'll start to pull it back. And you see how it changes the image here? This is adding like a smudge effect to the image. And I ended up with a strength of 80. Now for the extent, it's at a 0.89 and I drug it way back to a minus 76. And I really like that look. And now I'm going to work on sharpness. And for the sharpness, I'm going to take it and drag it to the left. And I ended up taking it the whole way off because I thought that really looks good. Let's add a few more filters and see if we can make this look better. So now I'm going to come up and click add filter. And I'm going to click on basic adjustment because I think I want to lighten it up a little bit. So I'll come to the exposure slider and let's drag it to the right. And I think I'm going to go to right there. 
point nineteen. I think that helps. Let's go to clarity. Let's add a little bit of clarity. I'm going to take this up to right there, point forty four. And now for shadows, let me darken up the shadows a little bit to add some contrast. And I'll take it over to right there, minus point forty five. And I like that. Let me shut off the basic adjustment by clicking the eye. Here's before the basic adjustment. And here is after a lot more contrast, a little bit lighter. I like it. Next, I want to work on the color because these pumpkins and gourds, whatever they are, are too oversaturated. So what I'll do is click add filter. And one of my favorites here is the HSL color tuning. I'll click on that. We're going to click on red. I'll start with the red hue. I just want to change the tint a little bit. I'm going to take this to the right. And I think I'll go to right there, 0.31. Now these guys look like pumpkins and gourds. And now I want to increase the saturation. I thought I would decrease it, but after I did the tint, I want to increase it over to right there, 0.43. And now I'll click on the orange button. Let's decrease that saturation to like right there, a minus 0.32. Now, let me shut off the HS color tuning layer. Here's before and here's after. And yeah, I think that is much better. And let's click on HSL color tuning again. And for orange, if I want to change its lightness, I can take this slider and maybe drag it to the left a little bit. And not much, but just a little. I don't have this in my notes, but I'm thinking now I just want to tone that down like a minus 0 0.04. And then for details, I'm going to take the detail slider and drag it to the right to add a little bit more detail to right there, 0.17. Now I'll hold down my space bar. We started out here and we end up here and I really like it. I think one more filter will add a little bit of a vignette. I'll click add filter, click on vignette. Now you can even add a color vignette. If you click the drop down, you can pick a color or whatever you want to do. I'm just going to click cancel. I'll just use a basic dark vignette. And I think it's a little too strong, so I'll take the strength and drag it back to right there, point 40. So let me shut off the vignette by clicking this eye. Here is before the vignette, and here is after the vignette. And yes, I think I'm really satisfied. One more before and after. I'll hold my space bar down. We started out here, and we end up here. And I really enjoy this fall abstract pumpkin gourd image. Now all we need to do is save this back to Photoshop. So we'll come up here and click Accept. That'll send us back into Photoshop. And here we are back in Photoshop. Now we started out here and we end up here. And if you wanted to, you could come down here and click and add a curves adjustment layer by clicking on curves. And what I'll do is click on this picker and I'm going to pick an area like right here. Click and just drag up and just lighten it up a little bit in these tones right there. I'll shut this curves off. Here's before and here's after. And I really like it. And that is it. Let me show you one more thing. I'm going to shut off all these layers. Now we started out here and as you can see this image, you know, the colors were off. The lighting is way off. I sent it into Topaz Photo AI. I'll turn the Photo AI layer on. It looks like this. And now the color and lighting looks much, much better. And now let me click on the Topaz Studio 2 layer and we've turned it into this beautiful abstract fall image. And then I added this curves adjustment layer just to lighten it up a little bit. And there you go. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you had as much fun as I had today. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.